welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering we are actually in module 3 uh, lecture number uh, 4 so we are actually uh, discussing about the compressibility and consolidation in uh, module 3 and uh, we introduced ourselves to the Tadjagi's one dimensional consolidation and then in the previous lecture we have uh, deduced the consolidation equation that is dou u by dou t is equal to cv dou square u by dou z square and this is for one dimensional consolidation and this one dimensional consolidation is assumed to uh, prevalent if a clay layer is subjected to large area loading on its surface and uh, if you are having uh, a restrained or a finite dimensions uh, uh, a loaded area then there is a possibility that uh, the three dimensional consolidation can come but however we assume it like uh, uh, one dimensional consolidation uh, and then we will try to solve the and calculate the settlements. So this example of the possibility of uh, three dimensional consolidation uh, two dimensional uh, uh, three dimensional consolidation can be uh, in uh, a footing resting on a soft clay. So uh, in the previous lecture we have deduced uh, uh, an equation uh, dou u by dou t is equal to cv dou square u by dou z square and then the cv is the quotient of uh, uh, consolidation and uh, it is related if you look into this it is related with uh, permeability and quotient of volume compressibility. So the K the quotient of permeability or Darcy's permeability as the Darcy's law is assumed to be valid. So K is equal to Cv Mv gamma W. So if you look into this uh, if uh, K is high uh, that means that the permeability is high then the Cv will be high then the time rate of settlements will be very high. If K is low like say marine clay uh, where 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 uh, to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meter per second then the Cv will be very low and then the consolidation will take long time. So this is the basic differential uh, equation of the Terzaghi's one dimensional consolidation and it can be solved with proper boundary conditions. So uh, we have uh, solved this by assuming uh, the proper boundary conditions and uh, this uh, was obtained and further we have uh, assumed these boundary conditions that at time t is equal to 0 uh, it is assumed that the load is uh, you know instantaneously applied onto the surface of the uh, soil that is at that time the initial excess pore water pressure within the soil is equal to u is equal to ui is equal to delta sigma delta sigma is the increasing load which is applied on the surface of the soil then u is equal to 0 at uh, z is equal to 0 and u is equal to 0 at the z is equal to hi that means that once the consolidation commences moment the consolidation commences the pore water pressure at the boundaries reduced to 0 this reasons we have discussed in previous lecture. So h is the longest uh, drainage path so if you are having a clay layer sandwiched between uh, let us say uh, sand layer at top and bottom then if the thickness of the clay is say 2 h then top portion of 2 h will flow towards the upper layer and upper the bottom portion of h uh, of the clay layer uh, the water in the bottom portion of the h of the clay layer will flow downward. So this is called double way drainage that is the double 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 way uh, that is two way drainage or uh, you know two way drainage or it is also called as uh, you know double open layer. Uh, in this case the consolidation will be relatively faster and uh, h will be equivalent to ht if it is the thickness then h will be equivalent to drainage patch length is equivalent to h by 2 or ht by 2 which is uh, you know the effective drainage length. Let us assume that we are having a rock base at the bottom and uh, upper layer is uh, you know the sand layer then all the way water flows for the entire thickness so it takes longer time then the, the ht is equal to h so that means that here the water flows for uh, you know takes long time to reach to the boundary and then it may take longer time uh, if you are having a cv which is actually very low value com considering uh, let us say we having a low permeable soil. 
So from the above the, the general solution can be obtained and this general solution is given by U the excess pore water pressure uh, is N2 N is equal to 1 to N infinity A N uh, sin N pi Z by 2 H uh, exponential minus N square pi square T V by 4. So T V the term what we are seeing is called the time factor and uh, which is nothing but T C V by H square T is the time required for a certain degree of consolidation and C V is the quotient of uh, uh, consolidation and H is equal to H D R square H D R is the drainage path length. So to satisfy the first boundary condition we must have the quotient A N such that U I is equal to N to 1 N is equal to 1 to infinity A N sin N pi Z by uh, 2H this, this we have put as 5. Now equation 4 is a Fourier uh, uh, sign series and A n can be given by A n is equal to 1 by H2 0 to 2 H U i sin n pi Z by 2 H dz. Combining equations previous uh, slide 4 and 6 then we get an expression which is U is equal to n is equal to 1 to infinity 1 by H uh, integral of 0 to 2 H limits U i that is initial excess pore water pressure sin n pi Z by 2 H dz. Uh, bracket close into sin n pi z by 2 h exponential of minus n square pi square T v by 4. So the T v is the non dimensional time factor and is equal to C v T by h square that is what we have discussed. So so far the no assumptions have been made regarding the variation of u i with the depth of the clay layer but uh, there are uh, you know the number of variations which are actually possible for uh, u i with the depth. Uh, it can be uh, you know the simplest thing which has been assumed by Terzaghi is that uh, the constant variation of U i with the depth that is mostly used in all the solutions. Uh, that means that uh, if uh, U i uh, if a delta sigma load is applied then it is assumed that the high what excess water pressure is assumed to occur uniformly throughout its depth. But there are also some assumptions like uh, UI assumed to increase with uh, like a parabolic shape or it can be like a 0 at the top and uh, you know at the center it will be uh, it is approximated like a triangle. So the different variations are there but however we are actually discussing on the, the uniform variation of uh, UA with the depth. So this is actually shown in this slide where. Uh, ui is equal to u0 which is actually uh, for a doubly drainage layer which is actually shown here hd is equal to 2h hd is equal to 2h so this is for the doubly drainage layer so this is you know uh, what the initial excess pore water pressure which has actually increased upon uh, loading so if ua is constant with depth if uh, that is uf ui is equal to u0 then we can write 1 by h uh, to the integral of 0 to 2h is equal to into ui sin 2 pi z uh, by 2h into dz is equal to 2u0 by n pi into 1 minus cos n phi is equal to u0. So this uh, uh, this will, will become like u is equal to n to 1 to infinity 2u0 by n pi by 1 minus cos n phi and sin n pi z by 2h in exponential of minus n square pi square t t v by 4. Here note that uh, uh, the term 1 minus uh, cos n pi is in the above equation is 0 for cases when n is even when n is equal to 2 4 6 it is 0. So therefore u is also 0 for the uh, non 0 terms it is convenient to substitute n is equal to 2m plus 1 where m is an integer m is equal to 0 1 2 3 it will take. So n is equal to 2m plus 1 which what we have assumed. So accordingly now uh, what we write is that uh, you know by uh, putting in terms of m then u is equal to m is equal to 0 to m infinity 2u0 by 2m plus 1 by pi into 1 minus uh, cos 2m plus 1 into pi sin 2m1 plus pi into pi z by 2h into exponential of minus 2m1. So we have substituted n is equal to 2m plus 1 so minus 2m plus 1 whole square pi square tv by 4. So uh, this uh, we can write and simplify it. Uh, like this with m is equal to 2m1 into pi by 2. So we can write uh, u is equal to uh, m uh, ranges from 0 to infinity 2u0 by m sin mz by h uh, exponential of minus m square tv uh, where uh, m is equal to 2m1 into pi by 2. 
So at a given time the degree of consolidation at any depth z in z within the clay layer that is at z is equal to 0 at the top and z is equal to 2 h at the bottom of the clay layer if h t is equal to 2 h then in that case uh, degree of consolidation at any depth is defined as excess pore water pressure dissipated to the initial excess pore water pressure. So initial excess pore water pressure is nothing but ui that is the uh, uh, you know the uh, the excess pore water pressure uh, dissipated divided by initial excess pore water pressure. So which is nothing but ui minus u by ui so we can actually write like 1 minus u by ui which is nothing but delta sigma dash by ui which is nothing but delta sigma dash by u naught. So this is delta sigma dash is nothing but uh, the net uh, uh, you know the stress which is actually uh, the, the increase in incremental area which applied and u naught is the initial excess pore water pressure. So by simplifying uh, this one uz is equal to uh, you know when you write in terms of u then u is equal to ui into 1 minus z. So from uz is equal to 1 minus u by ui. So if you look into this here by knowing ui, ui is nothing but the initial excess pore water pressure that is let us say uh, if you are assuming uh, delta sigma is the increase in the effective state at a depth z due to consolidation then uh, uh, this ui is equal to that particular that much particular stress. So, uh, so the ui is equal to let us say if it is uh, if a delta sigma of 100 kilo Pascal is applied and if the constant variation is assumed then ui is equal to 100 kilo Pascals. Then uz is the degree of consolidation at uh, you know um, that particular in depth within the clay. So if you look into this uh, with this now uh, where if you take at any time t slightly greater than t is equal to 0 then you know you can see uh, this uh, t is equal the uz is equal to 1 uh, because you know the moment uh, that the boundaries uh, the moment consolidation commences and the boundaries are the one where respond to the where the soil actually transfers the uh, you know the water transfers the uh, you know soil, soil grains at the boundaries. So that uh, the uh, the pore water pressure will get dissipated uh, uh, like 100 percent and the increase in effective stress will be equal to delta sigma dash. So uh, at any given time the degree of consolidation is given by uz excess pore water pressure dissipated to the initial excess pore water pressure and u is equal to ui into 1 minus uz. Now in most cases uh, if we however we need to obtain the average degree of consolidation for the entire layer and uh, so generally though we have actually defined that uz but mostly most cases uh, what we do is that we calculate the average degree of consolidation for the entire clay layer thickness. So in most cases uh, we need to obtain the average degree of consolidation for the entire layer and this is given by uav that is the average degree of consolidation is 1 by ht because ht is the thickness of the clay layer 0 to ht ui dz minus 1 by ht. 0 to hi u dz divided by 1 by ht 0 to ht ui dz. So the solution of this is obtained as uh, you know this system of uh, curves which is shown here variation of uz with z by h and tv is actually shown here. Here the variation of uh, uz with the depth for uh, various values of non dimensional uh, time factors so this t is nothing but tv. Uh, tv is 0 0.05 and this is uh, tv is equal to 1 here which is uh, you know the degree of consolidation will be uh, you know 1 that is tv is equal to uh, the, uh, you know uh, here which is per uh, degree of consolidation is equal to 100 percent. So the variation of uz with the depth for various values of non dimensional factors which is shown here and these curves are also called as isochrones and the diagrams which represents the successive stages of the process of consolidation by means of isochrones uh, is also briefly called as piezographs. The diagrams which uh, represent the successive stages of process of consolidation by means of isochrones uh, will uh, briefly be called as piezograph. That means that if we are actually having uh, let us say uh, you know the uh, so called uh, you know uh, at uh, t is equal to 0 that initial excess pore water pressure rises to uh, from the hydrostatic pressure the excess pore water pressure increases to uh, say u0 plus uh, delta u and uh, then it tries to fall uh, in a, such a way that at the center of the clay layer the pore water pressure will remain at to be dissipated 
and then at the top and bottom boundaries if it is open layers then you know it dissipates rapidly. So the system of the migration of this curves which is the system of successive stages of process of consolidation by means of isochrones is actually called as piezographs. So let us consider an example based on the chart we have discussed and in this consider the case of an initial excess pore water initial excess hydrostatic pore water pressure that is constant with the depth that is what, what we have assumed that U i is equal to E naught and for T v is equal to 0.3 determine the degree of consolidation at a depth Z by 3 measured from the top of the clay layer that is Z is equal to H by 3. So we have derived you know the equation for the excess pore water pressure as in terms of U is equal to M0 to M infinity to U0 by M capital M sin Mz by H exponential of minus M square TV where M is equal to 2M1 into pi by 2. So here Z is equal to H by 3 or Z by H is equal to 1 by 3 and M is equal to 2M plus 1 by 2. So uh, M is equal to 2M plus 1 into 5 by, uh, 5 by 2 here 5 by 2. So the here what we do is that we have given the solution in terms of the in terms of a table where z is equal to h by 3 and z is equal to z by h is equal to 1 by 3 m is equal to 2m1 2m1 2m plus 1 into pi by 2. So here what we do is that for different values of m for example if you see m is equal to 0 then m is equal to 0 means it is like like 3 pi by 2. Uh, that m is equal to uh, m is equal to zero here. Uh, that means that uh, this will become uh, uh, m is capital M. Capital M will become uh, pi by uh, yeah m is equal to one here. That t plus one three uh, three pi by two. That is correct. M is equal to zero. It is pi by two. And uh, m is equal to uh, three. It is uh, <coughs> m is equal to two. It is five pi by two. So this capital M value is pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 and 5 pi by 2. So we, what we have given is that we have given 0, 1, 2, 3 like that this uh, we have to see uh, whether we, where it will be we can actually stop this iteration. And the z by h is 1 by 3 that is constant, T v what we wanted is 0 0.3 and uh, m z by h after having got this one z by 3 is z by h is 1 by 3. So m z by h is pi by 6, pi by 2, pi pi by 6 then 2 by m. 1.273, an exponential of minus m square TV. We have got this sin mz by h that is also obtained here. Then the equation which is gives that 0 0.3036, 0 0.0005, triple zero five, and almost equal to zero. So when you submit these things, you know you do this and this summation, it comes to 0.3041. So that means that the value of 0 0.3041 calculated in step 9 above is the degree of consolidation at depth z by 3. So that means that u h by 3 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.3041 that is 69.59 percent of consolidation is already occurred. That means that 69.59 percent of consolidation is already occurred. So u h by 3 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.3041 which is nothing but 0 0.6951 which is nothing but 69.59 percent. So here what we are actually doing is that we actually have calculated now this we can actually also see from the from the chart here for z so this is z is equal to 0 and z by h is equal to 1 so z by h is equal to 1 by 3 so somewhere here. Uh, we can actually pick up for T v is equal to 0 0.3 so 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 so we can see that uh, you know the value of uh, uh, this uh, uh, the uz value will be about, will be about uh, 0.69 here 0 0.69 here between uh, uh, this is uh, for 0 0.3 and this one it is about 0 0.69. So the u is equal to uh, initial excess pore water pressure, the excess pore water pressure which is yet to be dissipated is equal to u i into 1 minus u z. So u z is the degree of consolidation. So now if you look into this, suppose let us say if uh, 0 0.31 times u i is yet to be dissipated, that means that 16 percent of the pore water pressure already 
got dissipated excess pore water got dissipated and it is transferred to the uh, soil grains and 31 percent is had to be dissipated at that particular depth z by h is equal to 1 by 3. So this is how uh, you know we use these uh, charts for determining this uh, uh, you know the consolidation at any depth but uh, for we actually also have uh, you know the uh, average degree of consolidation generally we take but this is an example with uh, determining the consolidation uh, um, you know this for time factor of TV that means that after certain time of our publication of certain uh, uh, initial uh, UI then you know the we are we are calculating that as a time factor TV for that we have determined uh, what is the degree of consolidation at a particular depth that is equal to h by 3 by using uh, the, the equation with what we derived and it also tells that if m greater than 3 uh, is actually uh, you know this almost like uh, the degree of consolidation which is obtained is negligible hence uh, you know we can actually stop at this particular uh, uh, you know iteration with m is equal to 2. Now the Terzighi's one dimensional consolidation as we are talking about the average degree of consolidation we let us define that the average degree of consolidation is also the ratio of the consolidation settlement at any time to the maximum consolidation settlement. Note that in this case if ht is equal to h ua is equal to u0. So combining the following equations u is equal to m m to 0 summation 2u0 by m sin mz exponential minus m square tv and u a v where we have just now defined that 1 by ht 0 to ht ui dz minus 1 by ht 0 to ht u dz by 1 by ht u 0 to ht ui dz. So uh, combining these two equation and then com completing the integration we will get the expression for average degree of consolidation as follows u a v is equal to uh, 1 minus m 0 m ranges from 0 to infinity summation 2 by m square exponential of minus m square tv where m is equal to 2m plus 1 small m into pi by 2 where tv is the time factor which is nothing but tcv by h square. So Terzaghi suggested the following equation for uav to the approximate values from the uav is equal to 1 minus m ranges summation of m ranges from m0 to infinity 2 by m square exponential of minus m square tv. So for uav is equal to 0 to 53 percent that is actually 52.6 percent it is rounded to 53 percent in some uh, you know references also say that 60 percent but uh, uh, let us say according to Terzaghi it is uav is equal to 0 to 53 percent tv is equal to 5 by 4 uav by 100 whole square and then uh, for uav greater than 53 or equal to 53 200 percent the tav is given by 1 minus 1.781 minus 0 0.933 within square brackets log 100 minus uav percentage uh, the parenthesis close the square brackets close. So that uav expression is given here which is uh, tv is equal to 1.781 minus 0 0.933. So there is a reason for uh, giving this. So if you plot the logarithmic of uh, uh, you know this uh, tv the time factor with uh, you know uav then we will get a curve which is uh, which is shown like this uh, the curve uh, represents the curve goes like this initially the the initial part of the uh, curve looks like uh, parabola and uh, then you know it uh, beyond uh, 90% 95% it will uh, try to you know uh, take the shape of the it will get asymptote with the uh, horizontal so you can see that this is asymptote here which is shown here so this indicates that you know the consolidation will never complete this infinitely long consolidation and uh, up to uh, 53 percent or so if this is the initial portion of the parabola and uh, when you extend the tangent uh, it goes and hits at the, the negative uh, uh, you know the TV and uh, this is the, the this resembles the equation of a parabola that is the reason why u by 100 uh, u percentage by 100 is equal to root over. Uh, 4 cv by pi h square root t so this is the equation of uh, parabola and this is the initial part of uh, you can say that primary con uh, for the consolidation up to 60% this is actually valid and uh, for uh, this is uh, this graph or this condition is actually for for two uh, two uh, two uh, you know conditions one is that open layer at top and bottom and initial excess pore water pressure is constant uh, uh, initial excess pore water pressure is constant with the depth 
So uh, this uh, this particular graph will actually uh, you know beyond that it actually straightens and beyond 90 percent you can see that this uh, uh, gets asymptotic. So the explanation for this is given like this uh, by for values of u greater than uh, 52.6 uh, which is rounded as uh, uh, 53 percent of the log T v uh, versus u curve is almost identical with a curve with the equation uh, that is for greater than that. So that is the reason why this curve was suggested by Terzaghi uh, this uh, particular equation suggested where uh, uh, for values greater than 52.6 the curve uh, the, the, the curve is actually almost identical with the curve with the equation T v is equal to 1.781 minus 0.933 log 100 minus u a v. So it, is all, it should also be noted that the radius of curvature of the curve u percentage versus log T v increases steadily until u becomes approximately equal to 50 then decreases once uh, and assumes a second minimum at u is equal to 85. So the curve the thus obtained has a point of inflection at uh, about u is equal to 75. So the point of inflection is about at that particular point where you have got one curvature here and you have got another curvature here that is about 75 percent somewhere here. And in the vicinity of u is equal to 95 it flattens rapidly that is what, what we are saying and approaches a horizontal asymptote uh, corresponding to u 100 percent. So on, on overall the curve represents an equation uh, we can say that uh, log of uh, base 10 T v uh, log, log T v is equal to function of u percentage log T v the base 10 uh, is a function of u percentage. So the substituting T is equal to T v is equal to T c v by h square. So we can write log T v is equal to log uh, log of base and T T c v by h square. When you apply the log for both sides, we can write uh, uh, log T uh, to the base ten plus log c v by h square. So we can say that uh, you know the as c v and the thickness are constant, so that is constant. So we have uh, log T v to the uh, to the base ten is equal to log T. That is the time required for consolidation. Uh, is equal to function of uh, u that is the degree of consolidation. So if the degree, cons degree of consolidation of the two beds of the clay with the different values of Cv by h square is plotted again is the logarithmic of time the time consolidation cons curves thus obtained have the same shape but they are separated from each other by horizontal distance which is nothing but log to the base uh, 10 Cv by h square. So this equation implies whatever we have written like log to the log to the uh, log tv to the base 10 is equal to log t that is time required for consolidation uh, to the base 10 plus constant is equal to function of u percent it implies that if the degree of consolidation of the two clay beds with the different values of cv by h square is plotted against the logarithmic of time the time consolidation curves thus obtained have the same shape but they are separated for each other by a horizontal distance which is nothing but log of to the base 10 C v by h square. For T v by T is equal to 1 the time uh, that is uh, that is the T v by T is equal to 1 the time consolidation curve becomes identical with the time factor consolidation curve. So that ends the because that is the reason why we use this uh, because you can see that T v by T uh, the for T v by T is equal to 1 the time consolidation curve becomes identical with the time factor consolidation curve. So this important property of semi logarithmic time consolidation graph facilitates the comparison of empirical consolidation curves with theoretical standard curves for the purpose of detecting deviations of real process from the theoretical ones. So therefore in many cases the semi logarithmic plot is preferable to the arithmetic plot. So the important property of this semi logarithmic time consolidation curve facilitates the comparison of the empirical consolidation curves with a theoretical standard curve for the purpose of detecting uh, the deviations of the real process from the theoretical one. So let us take an example again uh, where we have got a soil strata uh, which is uh, uh, gamma 19.5 kilon per meter cube that is the unit weight here the water table is here and uh, this is the proposed fill and uh, this is the soil strata this is the ground surface on this uh, the soil is to be proposed to be reclaimed for a height of 5 meters. Now we will consider before fill and short term after fill long term after fill. So we wanted to calculate what is the effective stress at point A. So here uh, this is the silty sand layer and this is uh, water table that is 1 meter below the ground surface 
and once the fill is placed then it will become like 6 meter, uh, but uh, then this will become the new ground surface and uh, below the uh, fill that is the gamma which is given that is saturated 19 kilon per meter cube and 16.5 kilon per meter cube is the unit weight of the clay and the depth at below point A is located is 4.8 meter vertically, the clay layer is 12 meter and so before placement of the fill the total stress can be calculated, we know that that is 18.7 that is before placement of fill so this will not be there 18.7 into 1 plus 19 into 2 that is this thickness plus 16.5 into 4.8 so we are actually interested in at this point. So that is 136 kilo Pascals and the pore water pressure at point A by taking U gamma is equal to 9.81 kilo per meter cube 9.81 that is 2 plus 4.8 67 kilo Pascals. So the initial effective stress is 69 kilo Pascals shortly after placing the fill. Now sigma A becomes now 136 plus 19.5 into 5 that is 234 kilo Pascals. Now the you know the uh, delta sigma is uh, increased by about uh, uh, you know uh, 100 kilo pascals then uh, ua is equal to ua naught plus delta u so the ua is uh, uh, which is nothing but uh, uh, that is 67 that is initial ex ex initial hydrostatic pressure plus uh, that uh, shortly after placing the fill entire uh, the pore water pressure is uh, the, the 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 drainage actually has not started so 19.5 into 5 so pore water pressure is 165 kilo pascals and uh, as the drainage is not started the effective stress will remain constant so because of that sigma dash a is equal to sigma a minus uh, u that is 69 kilo pascals now long term after the fill assuming that uh, the clay undergoes consolidation and uh, the complete consolidation has occurred then uh, what will happen is that now the total stress is uh, 234 kilo pascals and the pore water pressure drops down to 67 kilo pascals this was provided there is no change in the the ground water table levels uh, this uh, ua is equal to ua naught is equal to 67 kilo pascals now six, sigma dash a is nothing but now sigma a minus ua now we can see that now this this particular effective stress at this point after a certain uh, after elapsing uh, the time required for the completion of consolidation the soil gain the strength by you know uh, the increasing the, the enhancement of the effective stress by the amount which is uh, nothing but 136 to um, uh, the 69 to 167 kilo pascals. So this is about uh, the, the effective stress increased by almost uh, 2 times. So this is actually given uh, this uh, solution this is the solution but is actually given uh, in a graphical form uh, where uh, the uh, the construction period though instantaneous uh, loading is assumed but uh, the fills are actually constructed uh, you know over a period of time. So we will be also you know in this lecture uh, the ramp loading will be considered. So this is uh, you know the, the so called uh, uh, the construction period and uh, this is the delta sigma which is nothing but. Uh, you know this you know is maintained constant. So when we place this one and there is an increasing initial excess pore water pressure and then the consolidation occurs that means that the pore water pressure dissipates. Now what we have done is that we actually calculated the effective stress gradually as the consolidate as the pore water excess pore water pressure dissipates the effective stress keeps on increasing. So this is actually whatever before and after and shortly after the fill that is at this point and then after a long term after the fill so this is actually at this point. So this indicates this actually shows this example in a pictorial form. Now take another example wherein we have a soil strata which is shown here and we have the sand layer at the top so this is the sand layer and this is the sand layer at the bottom then sand layer so this is called open double open layers that means the two layer system where the clay clay is sandwiched between two layers and water table is 1.5 meter below the ground level and the clay is of having 12 meter thickness so 0 to 12 meters is the clay thickness this is the top of the clay this is bottom of the clay and 6 meters is the mid of the clay layer and in this actually proposed field is about delta sigma is equal to 100 kilo pascals or kilon per meter square and the E naught and initial water content the properties are given but important will be what we use in this is that CV quotient of consolidation is 18 to 10 to the power of minus 8 meter square per second. 
So here the pore water pressure in clay after 5 years uh, is actually uh, can be given like this the pore water pressure uh, uh, that is uh, for clay after uh, 5 years you uh, you know so if you look into this so this is the initial excess pore water pressure wherein what we can say is that uh, you know this is the water table so at 0 so 3 plus 2 150 kilopascals will be there so this is the initial excess pore water pressure this is provided if there is no you know the disturbance of the soil uh, uh, on this uh, particular uh, area then the hydrostatic pore water pressure conditions are uh, prevalent but you know if this uh, clay layer is subjected to certain type of fill and uh, randomly and then there can be uh, you know the pore water pressure can be more than the hydrostatic pressures but assuming that if there are no such activities then we actually have got this variation then at time t is equal to 0 once we apply at uh, you know the pore water pressure uh, increases to 130 kilo pascals here and here it is uh, because u i is equal to delta sigma is equal to 100 kilo pascals so it increases to 250 kilo pascals or kilo newton per meter square. So this is the first isochron uh, at t is equal to 0. So what will happen is that uh, the clay um, the undergoes uh, consolidation over a period of time. So we wanted to know what will be the pore water pressures in clay after 5 years after so uh, moment the uh, you know. Uh, once the uh, you know uh, once the uh, uh, load is applied and if no drainage is actually taking place then the pore water pressure uh, in the upper region is 0 to 30 and then uh, it increases to 130 and then 250 it actually this is the this is at uh, you know immediately after placing the fill so this is immediately after placing the fill so now consider uh, this particular portion only so this is will be the final uh, isochrone and this will be the first isochron this is the first isochron and this will be the uh, final isochron uh, which can happen once 100 percent consolidation which is not possible and uh, if that happens then that is uh, you know going to achieve. Now using uh, Tv is equal to Tcv by HDR square and for T is equal to 5 years we can write Cv in terms of meter square per year when you convert then uh, uh, the, the, so this is uh, 3.1536 into 10 to the power of 7 meter square per year and HDR is equal to 2H by 2 that is 12 by 2 that is double drainage and TV can be obtained as 0.35. Now what we can actually calculate is that uh, at Z is equal to 0 uh, meters, 3 meters, 6 meters, 9 meters, 12 meters means at these depths that is 0, th uh, 3, 6, 9 and 12 what is the you know the degree of consolidation. So uh, by not assuming as uh, you know the UZ we will try to find out. So uh, this can be obtained from the chart which we have given but uz is equal to 100 percent uz is equal to 61 and uz is equal to 46 percent uz is equal to 61 percent. So this is at uh, 3 meters this is at 9 meters and these are the top and bottom so you can see that this 100 percent consolidation has already occurred. So these are obtained like this here uh, for this is the top of the clay z is equal to 0 uh, meters for the top of the clay and z is equal to h t is equal to h meters below the for the top of, for the bottom of the clay uh, from the this is the bottom of the clay. Uh, so uh, we can actually find out here at z by h is equal to 1 let us say z by h is equal to 1 for T v is equal to we have got as 0.35 so for that we can actually obtain u z is equal to 0.46. So for the z by h is equal to 1 uh, which is nothing but here u z is equal to 0 0.46 this is how we are to obtain. So by using u is equal to u i into 1 minus u z at z is equal to 0 meters u is equal to 0 kilo pascals and 3 meters 6 meters 9 meters and 12 meters if you look into it. So uh, what we can actually do is that this 39 kilo pascals 54 kilo pascals and uh, 0 uh, you know the, the 0 39 54 39 0 this is the pore water pressure which is at to be dissipated that means that uh, what we have found out is that this excess pore water pressure which is at to be dissipated uh, is actually is obtained and this is actually after 5 years. So we actually calculate the time factor uh, based on the uh, T after, after applying the uh, surcharge of 100 kilo pascals you know, what will be the you know the pore water pressure in this soil. So this exercise actually has helped us uh, to plot this isochrone after uh, uh, you know 5 years this is the excess pore water pressure at to be dissipated. So you can see that this is at uh, z by h is equal to 1 that is uh, you know this uh, this at, at this point. So uh, this is uh, you know z by uh, you know at 3 meters and this is at 6 meters 
9 meters and this is at 12 meters and this is at top. So, uh, this uh, system of the migration of the isochrones actually happens here and this portion which is actually ashed with uh, light blue lines this actually shows that that portion is already transferred to the soil grains that means that the water pressure the excess pore water pressure already transferred to soil grains and uh, the portion within this uh, uh, with this, within this zone is at to be dissipated. So, the system of uh, you know uh, you know these uh, isochrones is actually called as piezographs and so we can actually uh, draw innumerable number of uh, piezochrones uh, isochrones as we actually traverse from 0 years to you know let us say that uh, second year can be here, third year can be here and uh, maybe after 10 years it can be here. So, uh, in this example what we have done is that we have uh, tried to calculate uh, what is the excess pore water pressure after uh, let us say uh, 5 years of time period. So, by what we have done is that we actually have used this uh, uh, the solution of the uh, differential consolidation uh, differential equation of the consolidate one dimensional consolidation theory and then uh, we try to use that and then try to find. Uh, uh, you know these uh, you know the pore water excess pore water pressure to be dissipated after certain period of time. Now uh, consider now uh, as uh, as has been told here uh, that uh, the loading which is uh, you know we assume that uh, suppose if you are having a clay layer of uh, uh, certain thickness H T is equal to 2 H and if you are having a double layer at both top and bottom that is a porous layer and then uh, ground water table as it is this point here. And if you are actually trying to put the fill is not possible to instantaneously which can actually can happen at time t is equal to 0. So, there is you know in fact in this particular you know 0 to T c that is T c is the time required for construction. So, for filling up to height and particularly if the soil is very soft it is not possible to load you know the entire this fill in a uh, in one go we have to do it in uh, different stages. So, in a way it, what will happen is that it, requ it requires certain uh, time period of uh, uh, construction that means that what we can do is that what one, uh, one need to do is that you have to uh, fill certain height h1 and wait for certain time and again uh, fill, uh, 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 fill for h2 wait for certain time. So, that waiting period is called waiting period of uh, you know for uh, you know dissipating the excess pore water pressure which actually has occurred for a given weight. So, for a given uh, fill height. So, uh, once we do that incremental uh, stage wise construction then we can actually achieve that. So, uh, the Wolfson 1977 presented a mathematical solution for one dimensional consolidation due to a single ramp load. But uh, if you are actually assuming uh, you know the instantaneous load then the uh, you know we will be actually looking into that uh, wherein it actually has got a uh, you know the deviation from the uh, you know the instantaneous load conditions. So, Wolfson 1977 uh, have given uh, a mathematical solution for one dimensional consolidation due to a, a single ramp load in where uh, the stage based loading has not been considered wherein uh, uh, a single uh, uh, ramp has been constructed and with uh, time T c, but uh, when you look into the number uh, this can be approximated when you have got multiple stages let us say that the Q c is reached in Q c 1, Q c 2 and Q c 3 and where the final uh, Q c 3 uh, Q c 1 plus Q c 2 plus Q c 3 is equal to Q c then you know if you take the same slope and all that can can be approximated, but uh, this is for a single ramp load where T c is the construction uh, time for placing the fill or attaining Q c. So, the expression for the excess pore water pressure uh, uh, for uh, the case where u i is equal to u naught is given by uh, that is what we have derived that u is equal to uh, m is equal to 0 to m infinity 2 u naught by m capital M sin m z by h into exponential of minus m square T v where m is equal to 2 m plus 1 into pi by 2. As stated above the applied load is a function of time and uh, q is equal to function of time where T a T a T suffix a where T a is the time of application of any load. So, for differential load d q applied at any time T a the instantaneous pressure increase will be d u i is equal to d q whatever has been applied that will be you know mobilized that is d u i is equal to d q. So, at time t the remaining excess pore water pressure d u at depth a z can be given by the expression d u is equal to m to the raise 0 to infinity. Uh, substitute now for u naught to du i du by m sin m z 
by h exponential of minus m square c v t minus t a uh, divided by h square. So, T a is the uh, you know the time of application of any load. So, now uh, you know by simplifying this we can get m is equal to 0 to infinity 2 uh, uh, substituting for d u i is equal to d q. So, 2 d q by m sin m z by h exponential of minus m square c v into T minus uh, T a by h square and uh, this is uh, termed as equation a. Then uh, the equation b is obtained by calculating the average degree of consolidation which is settlement at time t is equal to settlement at time t is equal to infinity. So, u a v is equal to alpha q c minus 1 by h t 0 to h t u d g z by q c where alpha q c is the total load per unit area applied at the time of the analysis and the settlement at time t is equal to infinity is of the of course the ultimate settlement. So, t is equal to infinity means the ultimate settlement and settlement at any time t is the average degree of consolidation. So, note that the term q c in the denominator uh, is equal to instantaneous excess per water pressure u a is equal to q c that might have been generated throughout the clay layer uh, had the stress q c has been applied instantaneously. So, that is the you know the q c is the uh, the alpha q c actually accounts that the partially uh, you know uh, uh, generated uh, uh, you know uh, the the factor alpha indicates the uh, partial uh, generation of the uh, you know applied low excess per water pressure uh, in the soil. So, for the proper integration of equations a and b uh, what we get is that for T v time factor less than or equal to T c then u is nothing but uh, 0 to infinity m m uh, 0 to infinity 2 q c by m, uh, m cube T c sin m z 1 exponential of 1 minus exponential of minus m square T v and u a v can be obtained as uh, T v by T c uh, 1 minus 2 by T v m 0 to infinity to 1 by m to the power of 4 1 minus exponential of minus m square T v and similarly for T v greater than that is time factor greater than the time of construction and which is actually given here. So, where T v is equal to uh, T c that is the time required for the construction of a particular fill of having intensity q c c v by h square. Now, this is actually given in the form of a uh, charts here for uh, plot against the time factor for single ramp loading and this plot is for T v that is uh, time factor and for different T c. So, T c is equal to nothing but uh, T c T suffix c C v by h square. So, if you know the T v and then by knowing the construction uh, period then you can actually calculate what is the average degree of consolidation. So, here here the you know the construction time actually has been accounted here. So, we look into the an example here wherein uh, uh, we can say that uh, based on the one dimensional uh, consolidation uh, test results. Uh, uh, on a clay the quotient of consolidation for the pressure range was obtained as 18 to uh, 10 to the power of minus 3 meters mm square per second. The, in the field there is a 2 meter thick uh, layer of same clay with a two way drainage. So, based on the uh, based on the assumption that a uniform surcharge of 70 kilo per meter square was to be applied instantaneously the total consolidation settlement was calculated as uh, 150 mm. However, during the construction the loading was gradual and uh, the resulting surcharge can be approximated as uh, uh, Q uh, in kilo Newton per meter square as 70 by uh, 60 uh, with the time t and time t measured in uh, days. So, estimate the settlement at time t is equal to 3 days 30 days and 120 days after beginning of construction that means that after beginning of construction. So, in this uh, if you see that uh, T c uh, is given as the time of construction is actually given as 60 days. So, based on the one dimensional uh, consolidation test on a clay uh, where here in this case the load is not actually placed uh, instantaneously if the load would have been placed instantaneously the settlement was actually calculated as 150 mm. But uh, if the for the given properties of the soil which is actually considered, uh, but if the load is actually placed over a period of time and if that is actually approximated as uh, 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 yes, 70 by 60 into T uh, uh, in where T measured in uh, T, uh, T in dimensions are in days, 
then uh, we can actually uh, what is actually has been asked is that the settlement at uh, 30 and 120 days after beginning of the construction. So uh, here uh, TC is equal to CV TC by H square. So where TC is the time required for the uh, time of construction of a ramp load and now uh, by taking TC is equal to 60 days uh, which is nothing but 60 into 24 into uh, 60 into 60. Uh, then it is nothing but uh, you know we actually converted into this uh, time of construction into seconds and HT the thickness the clay is very shallow, uh, shallow uh, in uh, thickness HD is equal to 2 meters it is equal to 2H is a 2 way drainage and H is equal to 1 meter that is 1000 mm. So by substituting we can actually get uh, TC as 0 0.0414 and uh, time uh, T as 30 days so for uh, at time T is equal to 30 days. Uh, you know what we get is that uh, TV is at obtained as uh, 0 0.021 uh, 0 0.0207. So time factor for which accounts the construction time of an ramp load is T suffix C which is for a time, uh, time of construction of the ramp is 60 days. So that has been calculated and time at time T of 30 degrees 30 days and uh, by uh, time conventional time factor is actually obtained as 0 0.0207. Now what we have to do is that from the chart which we have obtained for TV of uh, 0 0.0207 and TC of 0 0.0414 what is the average degree of consolidation. Once you know the average degree of consolidation then uh, ultimate settlement is what we have defined in this case also is 150 mm that means that. Uh, up to 30 days only 7.5 mm of settlement takes place up to 30 days of uh, you know do, as the construction is actually proceeding of the off way of the construction period only 7.5 mm of settlement takes place. So how it is been calculated for let us say that we, we will see for uh, uh, you know uh, for 60 days if you look into it for TV is equal to 0 0.083 and TC is equal to 0 0.014 we can see that uh, we will we'll get uh, uh, you know this UAV is equal to uh, equal 27 percent that is actually here. So this, this chart is for TV and TC different curves are here. So this is actually valid for this is after Wilson 1977 this is the plot against the time factor of the single ramp loading the ramp loading single ramp load in the sense that the ramp loading actually has taken place in a single uh, phase. So this is for 120 days here similarly what we have done is that for 120 days we calculated TV and then for uh, uh, you know we have determined uh, TC that is uh, for the uh, uh, we, we actually have got initially that is from uh, here for, uh, for the 60 days of construction we have got 0 0.414 then for uh, uh, TV of uh, 0 0.803 and TC of 0.414 we can say that this is the average degree of consolidation about 27 percent and uh, once we know the average degree of consolidation. So that means that after 120 days of uh, construction uh, the fill it is actually has got 40.5 mm of settlement only. So uh, this, in, this shows the you know market difference of uh, you know assumption of an instantaneous loading as well as uh, you know the, uh, the so called. Uh, uh, you know the ramp loading uh, conditions. So uh, once uh, having looked into that the limitations of one dimensional consolidation can be seen in the derivation of uh, uh, in the derivation of uh, one dimensional equation the permeability of KZ and coefficient of volume compressibility are assumed to be constant but as the consolidation uh, progresses void spaces decrease and this results in the decrease of permeability therefore the permeability is not constant. So coefficient of volume compressibility changes with the stress level therefore CV is not constant. Similarly the flow is assumed to be one dimensional but in reality flow is three dimensional and the application of external load is assumed to be produce excess pore water pressure over the entire soil stratum but in some cases the excess pore water pressure uh, does not develop over the entire clay stratum. So uh, what we have done in this uh, particular lecture is that we continued the theory of uh, Dirichlet's theory of one dimensional consolidation and we have seen the ramp loading and uh, we deduced the equations uh, and then uh, relevant equations and we also have solved the couple of example problems uh, as an application for what we studied 
and then finally we have looked into the limitations of uh, one dimensional consolidation uh, theory uh, wherein we said that uh, there is some parameters which are actually assumed like permeability, quotient of compressibility are assumed to be constant, but as the consolidation progress is uh, actually happening uh, void spaces decrease and the result in decrease in permeability therefore the permeability is not constant and similarly the value of the CV is actually not constant. So uh, further we will actually look into uh, the uh, you know the different aspects of uh, consolidation in subsequent lecture.